guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and I am the crochet designer here behind A Crafty Concept. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to crochet this super cute, bobblicious, crafty boho stocking. This pattern is super easy. It looks intimidating, but it's really not. And the tutorial is beginner friendly. So I go through every single step with you guys. So don't be intimidated to make one of these. It's really not as hard as it looks. Also, this guy was designed to last. So if you are making one of these for your family or for your customer's family, you can make it knowing this is going to hold up for many years to come. Let's just jump right into the tutorial and see what you need to make a crafty boho stocking. Here's what you will need to make a crafty boho stocking. Some faux fur yarn for the brim of the stocking. This is Hobby Lobby's Yarn Bee brand in the color Mink, and it's called Fur the Moment. Some worsted weight yarn for the body of your stocking. I'm using Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn in the color Light Sage. An H or 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. This is Clover Amore brand, which is my favorite hook to work with. A tapestry needle. I haven't sewn in furry ends yet, so it may have to be bigger than this. We will cross that bridge when we get there. And just a pair of scissors. We're gonna start with our worsted weight yarn. Make a magic circle, and I'm gonna do that with you guys here on screen. So you're just gonna wrap around your fingers. Pinch where it crosses with your thumb, insert your hook into the loop, grab the yarn and pull it through to make another loop, and then just kind of keep that circle hanging there and chain to secure it. Now we're going to half double crochet 10 times into the center of the circle, yarn over, insert our hook into the circle, grab our yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, Pull through all three. That is a half double crochet. We're going to put 10 of those right into the center of our circle. You may notice that when I grab my yarn for the second part of the half double crochet, I yarn under. So my yarn goes under my hook. Um, traditionally, people would yarn over. This is just how I do it. It does not affect the finished stocking. After you get your 10 half double crochets, we're going to pull on our tail here, closing up our circle, which is why it's magic. Insert our hook into the top of our first half double crochet. Join and chain one. For row two, we are just going to half double crochet increase in each stitch around for a total of 20 stitches. And half double crochet increase just means two half double crochets in the same space. So we took one space and turned it into two stitches. Okay, this is our last increase for a total of 20 stitches. Join into the top of our first half double crochet and chain one. For row three, we're going to increase in the first stitch and then half double crochet in the next stitch. Repeat that all the way around with increase, half double crochet, increase, half double crochet, giving us a total of 30 stitches in the row. So there's our increase. Half double crochet, that's one. We're gonna do that nine more times for a total of 10 repeats, and that will give us 30 stitches. Okay, our last stitch. Join into the top of our first half double crochet and chain one. We're gonna do one more increase row where we're going to increase in the first stitch and then half double crochet and then half double crochet. That's our repeat. We're gonna do that 10 times for a total of 40 stitches in the row. So increase, half double crochet, half double crochet, that's one. Okay, coming up on our 40th stitch, 
We're going to join into the top of our first half double crochet and chain one. For row five, we're just going to put one half double crochet in each stitch around again for a total of 40 stitches in the row. Okay, after we finish our 40th half double crochet, we're going to join into the top of our first half double crochet and chain one. Before we start row six, we're going to turn our work. For row six, we're going to start by putting a bobble stitch in the first stitch and then a single crochet in the next stitch. We're gonna do that all the way around, bobble, single, bobble, single, ending with a single crochet and giving us a total of 40 stitches in the row. So we're gonna start over here with the bobble stitch. I'm gonna do that here slowly with you guys. We're gonna yarn over, insert our hook into the stitch, grab our yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's one, we're gonna do that three more times. Yarn over, insert our hook, grab our yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, that's two. three and then that's four after you get all four of those little stitches and then you'll have five loops on your hook we're going to yarn over pull through all five loops that finishes our bobble stitch but we're not going to chain or anything right here we're just going to go directly into our single crochet stitch down here in the next space so that gives us a bobble on this side, which will give our finished stocking lots of pretty jolly texture. And we're just going to continue to bobble stitch and single crochet in each stitch around for a total of 40 stitches in the row. I'll do a couple of them with you guys here on camera. And then I will do some camera magic and come back when the row is finished. Finishing up my last bobble and then my 40th stitch, which is the single crochet, join into the top of our first bobble. Chain one and then we're going to turn our work again and get ready for row seven. Rows seven through ten are going to be all the same thing, which is just one half double crochet stitch in each space around for a total of 40 stitches in the row. Again, that's rows seven through 10. So seven, eight, nine, 10, the next four rows. And then we will come back after I finish those four rows and do another bobble row. Chain one, and I did want to add here that you will not be turning your work after any of these rows until we get to row 10. After you finish the last stitch in row 10, we will turn our work. I just finished my last stitch in row 10. Now I'm going to join into the top of my first half double crochet, chain one, and then we're going to turn our work. For row 11, it's going to be another bobble row, just like row five, I think is what it was, six. We're going to start by putting a bobble stitch here in the first space. And to do that again for a quick refresher, yarn over, insert our hook into the stitch, grab our yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, that's one. Do that three more times, two, three and last time four we now have five loops on our hook yarn over pull through all five loops that finishes our bobble stitch now we're going to go directly into our next space for our single crochet stitch we're going to continue to bobble stitch and single crochet stitch all the way around for a total of 40 stitches in the row I will come back after I get all of these bobbles done. Got my last stitch for row 11, joining to the top of my first bobble stitch, chain one and turn our work. Now for rows 12, 
12, 13, 14, and 15. We're going to repeat this chunk down here just by putting one half double crochet stitch in each space all the way around for a total of 40 stitches in each row. We're going to do that for four rows. So 12, 13, 14, and 15. And then after row 15, we will turn our work in preparation for row 16, which is another bobble row. Okay, finishing up row 15, I'm going to join into the top of my first half double crochet, chain one, and turn my work. For row 16, we're going to be doing another bobble row. So we're gonna start by putting a bobble stitch in the first space right here. And then a single crochet in the next space. Repeat that all the way around, bobble, single, bobble, single, for a total of 40 stitches in the row. And then we are going to join and turn our work. Okay, finishing up the row. Going to join into the top of my first bobble stitch, chain one, and turn our work. Now we are going to do rows 17 and 18. So we are doing two rows with one half double crochet stitch in each space for a total of 40 half double crochets in the row. And that's going to be for row 17 and row 18. And then we are gonna do the heel portion of our stocking after we finish row 18. So I'm going to do rows 17 and 18 and then I will be right back. Okay, just finished row 18. Going to join into the top of my first half double crochet and chain one. Now we are going to start our heel portion, but how you start is going to choose if your stocking faces to the left, like a J, or faces to the right, like a backwards J. I will be making my stocking so that it faces like a J, a, yes, a J, yes, sorry. <laughs> so the heel will be here, the toe will point over here, and then the, the body will come up this way. If you want your stocking to face this way, you're going to want to turn your work before you start the first row of the heel. So I'm going to be making mine face like a J, so I will not be turning my work and I'm just going to put 19 half double crochets along this row. And then if you wanted your stocking to face the other way, you would just turn your work and put 19 this way. Okay, 19 stitches, and this is going to start our heel. Now I'm just going to chain one and turn my work. Now we're getting ready to start row two. We're going to half double crochet decrease over these first two stitches here. To do that, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into the first stitch, grab our yarn, pull it through, insert our hook directly into the second stitch, grab our yarn, pull it through, now we have four loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through all four loops. That's a half double crochet decrease. And then we're going to half double crochet, I think it's 15. Yeah, 15. <laughs> Fourteen and fifteen and then we're going to half double crochet decrease over these last two stitches Which will give us 17 half double crochets in the row counting our two decreases Chain one turn our work For row three of the heel we're going to decrease over the first two stitches Yarn over insert your hook in the first stitch grab your yarn go directly into the second stitch Grab your yarn, four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all four loops for a half double crochet decrease. Then we are going to half double crochet 13 times. So 
12 and 13 and then half double crochet decrease over the last two stitches here chain one and turn our work for row four of the heel we are going to start with a half double crochet decrease then we are going to half double crochet 11 And then end again with a half double crochet decrease over the last two stitches, giving us a total of 13 stitches in the row. Chain one, turn your work. This is our last decrease row. We're going to start with a half double crochet decrease. Then we're going to half double crochet in the next nine stitches. And nine, and then decrease over the last two. And chain one. Turn our work. For row six, we're going to start by putting a half double crochet increase in the first stitch. So that just means two half double crochets in the exact same space. And then we're going to half double crochet nine. nine and half double crochet increase in the last stitch giving us a total of 13 stitches in the row chain one and turn our work for row seven we're going to start by putting a half double crochet increase in the first stitch so two half double crochet stitches in the same space then we're going to half double crochet 11 11 and then we are going to half double crochet increase right here in this last stitch giving us a total of 15 stitches in the row chain one and turn our work start with a half double crochet increase in the first stitch then we're going to half double crochet 13 Okay, and then we're going to end by putting two half double crochet stitches in the last stitch Giving us a total of 17 stitches in the row chain one and turn our work This is the last row in our heel. We are going to start by putting a half double crochet increase in the first stitch and then half double crochet across 15 15 and then we're going to increase in the last stitch giving us a total of 19 stitches in the row and chain one Okay, pull that out. Now. We're going to make our heel shape This is what we have so far and it's not looking very heely to turn this little into a heel We're going to fold this end down and kind of line up the stitches with row one of the heel and then row nine of the heel so they match up. Then we're going to put our hook back in our loop over here where we just did our chain one. And we're going to single crochet these two sides together so they're seamed. Now this is the raw side of our work so you'll have to find places for your hooks to go since it's not like clean stitches like this would be. And it should be about six stitches. The main thing is that you get them lined up. They're not conky wampus. If you squeeze in a few extra stitches to do that, that's totally fine. So one, and I'm just going through the first row and then the last side, like those two sides going through both at the same time. That's two, and then putting a single crochet there 
This was faster than doing a whip stitch with tapestry needle, which is what I used to do when I made these. And I am all about faster because if you are making these stockings to sell, you're gonna wanna be able to crank them out to keep up with all of your orders. Okay, this is the last one. I think that's six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I did seven, so it really doesn't matter as long, it, the main thing is that they're lined up and they don't get like, like this or something, something weird. So I did seven stitches, and now we're going to cut our yarn and tie off over here. Then we're gonna go to the other side of our heel and insert our yarn and join in right here on the other side. Join your yarn and chain one. Now we are going to single crochet this side together just like we did the first side of our heel. So I'm gonna go right back in that same spot that I just joined for my first one. We're going for seven, so at least it's symmetrical. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. All right, last one. And seven, perfect. Now we are going to pull up a loop there so we don't lose our working yarn and flip our heel so that it pooches out the way it's supposed to. Let's just stick our tails on the inside so they don't get in our way. And you can see this is what we've got. This is the wrong side because you can see our seam. So my toe will be pointing this way. Looks like a cute little Christmas slipper at this point. Now we are going to finish crocheting the length of our stocking. Okay. So this gets a little tricky, but for we're gonna jump back to our row counts for the stocking, and we're gonna be at row 19, because this was 17 and 18, remember? So now we're gonna be at row 19, and we're just going to single crochet around, but the corners get a little weird, which I will show you what to do on those. Um, but I'm gonna start by putting my first stitch right here in this space. And we're gonna start with just half double crochets. And the goal is to get 42. Three, four, I'm just gonna do the whole row here on video with you guys. Five, because it does get a little weird and I wanna be able to show it to you. Okay, so I did 19 stitches just now across the back of our heel. Now we have this big mess right here. We are going to do three half double crochets together to make this a nice little triangular corner here. So we're gonna make our own spots and then end up in this guy right here. So yarn over, insert your hook into a spot, pull up a loop, go directly into a next spot, pull up a loop, and then one more spot right there in that corner that corner piece. Pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all those stitches. And you can see it kind of gives it a clean, if we were to just do a half double crochet and then a half double crochet, there would be a big giant hole there. And this fills that hole in nicely. So that gives us 20 stitches so far. And then we are just going to continue to half double crochet across until we get to the other corner, which we're gonna do that again. 23, 24, 40, 41. Okay, so now for our 42nd, stitch, we're going to do another half double crochet three together over this mess right here. So yarn over, insert our hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then we're gonna make our own spots for two more stitches to go 
just kind of shoving them in there so it gives it a nice clean rounded corner right here pull through all the loops on our hook that gives us 42 join into the top of our first half double crochet and chain one okay let's look at it see it's nice and clean it gets a little weird you have to get a little creative but it makes a really clean little stitch there so I'll call that a win now for the rest of our stocking the rows will have 42 stitches instead of 41 and I don't know why this looks better than 40 but when I was designing this pattern if I when I did 40 stitches instead of 42 it looked like the top part of the stocking was skinnier than the bottom part so I just thought we would add two on the corners there to make it 42 so now all of the rows will have 42 stitches instead of 40 and it will look to be the same size. I'm not 100% sure why. Maybe it's because of the curve. But I'm doing row 20 right now and it will have 42 stitches. And then I will be back and we will do row 21 together. Okay, finishing up row 20, I'm going to join into the top of my first half double crochet chain one and now we're going to turn our work for row 21 this will be a bobble row just like down here before so we're going to put a bobble in the first stitch and then a single crochet in the second stitch repeat that all the way around but this time we're going to be doing it for 42 stitches total instead of 40 Join into the top of our first bobble stitch and chain one and turn our work. Okay, finishing up the row. Join into the top of our first bobble stitch, chain one and turn our work. Now we're going to do four rows of half double crochet stitches just like we did down here. And that is going to be our repeat for the rest of our stocking body. We'll do four rows of half double, 42 half double crochet stitches, and then a bobble row. And then four rows of half double crochet stitches, and then a bobble row. We are going to do that until we have 36 rows. So your 36th row will be a bobble row, and then you're going to do five more rows, let's see, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. Six more rows of half double crochet stitches, before we get to our brim, which is when we're gonna use our faux fur. So continue doing bobble, four rows of half double crochet until you get 36 rows, the 36th row being a bobble row, and then you're going to do six rows of half double crochets instead of four, so it's just a little bit extra to give us some more length before we start our brim. I am going to do most of this off camera just for video timing's sake, but it's exactly the same thing we've been doing down here. It's just 42 stitches instead of 40, and you're gonna keep going until you get 36 rows, and then you will do six half double crochet rows for a total of 42 rows and then we will switch to our faux fur yarn which I will do here on camera with you guys be back in a few minutes okay I just completed my 42nd half double crochet for 42 rows this is 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 so we had two extra rows of half double crochets at the end here instead of um, just four rows like we did in between all of the bobbles. Now I'm going to insert my hook into the top of the first half double crochet, but instead of grabbing my green yarn, I'm going to grab my fur yarn and pull that through instead. Our fur yarn and chain one, and then go ahead and snip this off so it's not in our way. Okay, this is how much was left of the full skein, by the way. If you are curious, I think it's about four to five ounces to make this guy. For the next two rows, we are just going to yarn over and half double crochet in each stitch with our faux fur yarn. I know it's gonna look a little funny if you've never used it before, especially, but just know where your stitches are in your head and with your fingers. It's really not that hard, especially once you get the hang of it. We're going to do two rows of 42 half double crochets 
with our fur yarn and that will be rows 43 and 44. And then when we get to row 45, we're going to do something a little bit different. I will say that making these stitches with the clover more hook is a little bit difficult because sometimes I'll catch the fur like right here on the rubber handle and it will pull at it. You want to be careful not to make your tension too tight or you will kind of like push down all this beautiful fur and it will be like super tight. Um, so just keep your tension fairly loose when working with the fur yarn. That way you don't have just a big wad of faux fur instead of a beautiful fluffy brim for your stocking. I'm almost done with this row. The next row is a little bit more tricky because you can't see your stitches as easily as you can with this row, but you can easily feel for the stitches and also just keep counting. That helps. Count all the way to 42. And the good thing about this yarn is it is super forgiving. So if you do mess up or don't get your stitches right in the exact same spots that they need to be in, you won't really be able to tell with this yarn. So I'm going to join into the top of my first half double crochet and to find it, I'm just going to feel with my fingers until I feel where the join, the, the little V at the top of the stitch is. Put my hook right in there, just like that. Grab the yarn and pull through, then pull up a loop. Okay. Give myself some slack here. The next row is going to be exactly the same. Half double crochet one time in each stitch all the way around. You can kind of see where the stitches are, but just, just barely. You can absolutely feel them, though, with your fingers. So just go slow. Give yourself plenty of patience. And make sure you count. Should have 42. Okay, 42 furry half double crochet stitches. I'm going to find the top of my first half double crochet stitch and join and then chain one. Now for row 45, we are going to turn our work and work in the opposite direction. And this one is going to be a little tricky again too, but just go, go slow, be patient, and you will be able to figure this out. We are going to be putting our stitches in the back bump only of our fur yarn. Hang on, let me go get a sample. So this was made with um, two strands of yarn at the same time, but pretend it's not. This is what the top of our stitches look like, even with the faux fur yarn. So instead of putting our hook right here where we have been putting it, we're going to just go right here in the back loop only, leaving that front one, front one unworked. And we're going to put our half double crochet here and that's going to make it fold over nicely for the top of our brim. So just feel for your stitches and estimate where you think the back loop is for 42 stitches all the way around. Main thing is that you just keep counting. And then you only have two more rows to go. Okay, I just did 42 half double crochets all the way around in the back loop only. Join into the top of my first half double crochet under both loops. We won't be doing back loop anymore. It was just for that one row. Okay, if I can find it. Okay, join into the top, chain one. And now for rows 46 and 47, we are just going to half double crochet one time in each stitch all the way around for a total of 42 stitches. And then our brim will fold over very nicely and look all kinds of Christmassy and jolly and fluffy. Okay, join into the top of my first stitch, chain, well, we're gonna tie off now so we can cut our yarn and then pull it through. I really like how this fur looks against this green color, very pretty. Okay, 
And now we can fold our brim down and it folds really nicely where that back loop only is. That's our brim. And now we have one more finishing touch that I decided to add to the pattern as I was making this video. This part is totally optional. If you don't wanna do this next part, you can just sew in your tails and call this guy finished. That's all that's left to do is sew in all the tails from the inside. But let's go ahead and do this little um, extra bonus part. So still using your faux for your yarn and your hook right here, you can get a bigger hook if you don't wanna fool with this one. This part doesn't really have to be a certain size. We're gonna make a magic circle just like we did at the beginning of the stocking. And then I'm going to single crochet five into the middle. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm gonna close this guy as best I can. It's a little tricky with the fur. And I'm going to start Going back in, I'm just gonna go in the round and keep it going, and I'm just gonna count as I go because this does not have to be a particular size. If it's a little bit messed up, you won't even be able to tell. I'm just gonna make a little amigurumi ball, basically. One, two, in the same hole. This is very difficult, so you gotta feel for your holes. Three, four, then we're gonna, so we're going for 10. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now I'm going to do ten again. So one in each stitch. Again, just kind of feeling as I go. Two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I'm going to sew in this tail really quick with my tapestry needle. Just sew it in as best you can. Make sure it's nice and tight in there. Got a feel for the stitches. Okay, and then I'm just gonna leave that tail right there and I'm gonna pop this guy. Nope, so okay, this is the back side. We're not gonna use this side, this is the good side. So I'm going to pull this tail onto the inside, which is now going to be the wrong side. There we go. That way the fluffy side is the nice pretty outside that everybody's gonna see. And then I'm going to start closing this up by decreasing every two stitches together. And I'll talk you through it, but I know you're not gonna be able to see what I'm doing. But I'm gonna insert my hook into the first stitch, grab my yarn, pull it through, insert my hook into the second stitch, grab my yarn, pull it through, yarn over, pull through two, that's one. We're going to do that five times. Two. Three. Okay, four, and then the last one is five. Now we have a little tiny ball, and you can stick some polyfill in there. I'm just going to use this tail to kind of keep it stuffed full, and then I'm going to do a slip stitch in the next space, and then cut that tail. Pull it through, and now use my tapestry needle to sew it closed. You can throw some polyfill in there if you want your ball to be a little bit more fluffy, or if you have any more um, scraps of yarn you just want to throw in there. So I'm going to feel for the stitches here, and sew it closed with my tapestry needle. Okay. 
Okay, and after you get your little ends sewn in, that is our first little ball, and I'm going to make two of these. I will do the second one off camera, and these are just going to dangle on the front of our stocking as a little decoration, so it's totally optional, but I thought it would be cute. So, there. That guy's all done, and then I'm gonna make the other one, and then I'll come back and we can attach them together. Okay, I have my two little fuzzy balls right here. This one looks a little bit fluffier than this one. I think it had more of a starting tail to stuff it with, but it's okay. They're still cute. Now I'm going to take my H hook again, and back to my green acrylic yarn. Leave a decent sized tail, because you're gonna need that. Make a slip knot. And then we're just going to chain until we think it's long enough, making this up as I go. Okay, 55, and then cut our yarn and tie off. Now I'm going to get my stocking. Okay, this is the wrong side because you can see the seam. So I'm gonna make sure the right side is facing up. Then I'm just going to use my crochet hook. I'm gonna go under these three middle stitches right here just so it's got plenty of stuff to grab onto. Pull my yarn through, tie it like you would tie your shoe, very gently, so you don't want it to get all caked up. And go for a symmetrical look. There we go. Oh, I love droopy bows. Okay, now I'm going to take my tapestry needle and thread my tail on there, and then I'm gonna pop it through one of these balls, like that. I'm gonna pull it all the way up to where the chains start. And then I'm going to tie it. I'm just gonna insert my hook into the chain and then back into the ball and then back into the chain just a few times. And you know what? I'm going to pick up that loop right there and go under it, see? And that's gonna help to tie a little knot. Now I'm just gonna go around, around the chain, and then through the loop, and pull it down to tie another little knot. Okay. Just secure it a little bit more. Keep doing that until you feel like it's safely and snugly on your little pom-pom here. And then you can snip off your yarn and do the same thing to the other side. Okay, after you get that tied in, sniff off your tail. And then you have two little dangly pom-poms that match the, how cute is that? Oh, I love this. Came to me while I was design, like while I was making the video. The original design did not have these, but they add so much. I got so excited about the little details here, I almost forgot to show you guys how to make and attach the little hook that we're going to use to hang this guy on our mantle or wherever you hang your stockings. Taking our green acrylic yarn or whatever color you used for the body of your stocking, leave a very long tail that's a couple feet long and chain 27. I'll still be using my H crochet hook. After I chain 27, I'm going to single crochet back down the chain for a total of 26 stitches, starting in the second chain closest to my hook. So not this guy, but this guy right here. I'm going to single crochet back down for a total of 26 stitches. 25, 26. Now we are going to chain one and turn our work. For row two, we're just going to slip stitch 
in each stitch all the way down for a total of 26 slip stitches. And this is just super simple. You just insert your hook into the space, grab your yarn, pull through and pull through. That's a slip stitch. We're gonna do that all the way down. This will add some strength to your little hook. That way when your stocking is weighed down, your hook won't stretch out to where it's no good for the next year. So this will give it some strength and durability. Okay, last slip stitch and chain one. Now for our last row, we are just going to single crochet one time in each stitch all the way down again for a total of 26 stitches. I put mine right in there and out here. I'm not 100% sure where, if I'm going into the slip stitch or what, but this is how I do it. So if I'm looking at this stitch that's on the top here, I just go right between those two and pop my hook out to the other end and that's where I place my single crochet stitches. I don't think it's super important to make sure that you do exactly like I do. I think anything you guys whip together will be fine for a stocking hook. And after I finish this row, we will attach this guy to our stocking using our tapestry needle. Okay, this is 26. Now we can cut our yarn, again, leaving a pretty long tail, so we have plenty of room for sewing on to our stocking. Okay, now grab your tapestry needle, and we are going to fold this guy in half and he is going to be sewn onto our stocking down in there. I'm gonna just scoot this down so we can see more of the green, because that's where we wanna sew this onto. And you want it to be in line with the heel, so right on that fold. So we're gonna go about right there. So that's where I'm going to line mine up, if you can see that. to put this tail right here into the tapestry needle and I'm just going to sew this on with an easy whip stitch. We just go through the stocking, through the first side of the hook and then through, sorry, through the second side of the hook so you can see and then pull our yarn and it will just be whipped around and holding everything nice and snug. And then I'm just going to keep going in the same row on the stocking. So my hook is straight across the bottom. Now I'm going to pick up this tail here, put it in to my tapestry needle in the same direction that the other tail is going. And then I'm just going to go back down my hook, this time with two tails, and then making sure it's just extra secure. We do not need any hooks falling off some full stockings. That could be a disaster. After you get your hook completely sewn on, you can tie off and sew in all of your tails. And now your stocking is finished. I almost forgot this step. I would have been needing it when I went to hang this guy up this season. Okay, I'm gonna sew in these tails since they're already on my hook. I mean, my needle together, that makes it go by a little faster than doing one tail at a time. And there we go, that'll do it. I do still have to sew in my first tails, but I will do it eventually. Maybe 
but now we have a finished stocking that is ready to be hung and ready to hold lots of gifts. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys love this tutorial and I can't wait to see all of your finished crafty boho stockings. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me either here on YouTube or you can send me a direct message on Instagram. Instagram is my main gym and where I spend most of my time. So that would probably be the fastest way to get a hold of me. Also, I wanted to invite you guys to sign up to my newsletter today. I send out a freebie every single Wednesday and lots of good crochet goodness throughout the week. Um, if you sign up through the link below in the description, you will get a free pack of Handmade With Love wrap labels to hug around all of your new stockings that you make that are Christmas and holiday themed. So when you go to gift these or sell them to customers, you can wrap them and present them in a really cute way. Also, be sure to tag me in any pictures you post of your crafty boho stockings so I can see them, like them, and share them on my Instagram stories. Have a fantastic day and I will see you guys in the next video.